Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. Today I would like to show you how to bend the prong in the Rhino 3D program so that will make your rendering look realistic and look much nicer. Are you ready? Let's get started. A lot of time when we are working on a jewelry setting and then you can see that the prong we intentionally want to leave it a little bit longer. That's enough room for them to bend over the prong. So this is uh, the way that we send it out for 3D printing. Have the prong over the table height, which is a stone table height. Now coming over here, this is not too good on the rendering. If your customer uh, or client is request for rendering, they don't understand why the jewelry is so spiky. So a lot of time we need to bend over um, to let them hopping on the top to make it they look like it's they are finished and sometimes we can even taper the prong so I'm going to show you two ways one is using the band the other one is using the cage edit and uh, the third one is actually in the sub D and I have including that into my sub D course if you're interested about my sub D course you can check on the link at the description below all right that's starting from the scratch so that's it. We have the setting there disregarding like how big uh, the stone is. I do have a video talking about the prong size um, on the Q&A section. So we are not going to go for it. So that's it. This is the setting and we are having this setting for the printing. Uh, before you actually boiling all the prong to, you know, the base underneath it, uh, you want to do uh, the couple change if you want them to be bent. First of all, if this is going to be bent and we only need to deal with one of them, the this one should be a little bit shorter, something like that. All right. And when you are going to bend something over, we are going to use the command for bend. And instead of going from very bottom and going up and bend like this, which will cutting into the stone, you wanted to see where you're going to bend it. That's it. This is where the girdle, where I'm going to bend it. So I'm going to actually starting the axis from here and up and bend it over like this. So that's how you bend in the prong. Uh, oftentimes you're going to see this one is a little bit bumper. So we are going to go back one step. Maybe what we need to do is having them coming even a little bit more uh, lower. And sometimes the lazy way you can do is you can just go in so low like that and just having a, a small dot there. Uh, in this case, you might need to move in, in a little bit. But I still like to go back with the uh, bend and see if I can get a good result there. So that's using the bend command one more time. And we want to go from here up and bend it a little bit like this, right? You don't want to use a bend to be too extreme. It won't look good. All right. So now that's one thing. And once you are done with it, you can actually using the polar array command, snapping into the zero and we need four of them. 360 degree and then we'll get something like this. So that's one of the way to use it by using the bend command. Let's talk about using the second way to bend the prong and we only need one prong there. So with this prong, I'm going to have them coming down just a little bit and we're going to use the commands called cage edit. When you use the cage, cage edit, it's going to ask you to select the object and we're going to select this prong. And then right here, you have other, uh, other many choice, uh, we want to use is bounding box. So you can find a boundary, uh, within this object and we want to align to the world. So it's just hit enter. And then you're going to have an X, Y, Z count. So what is important is the Z count that we need to have a lot more counts. So that's, uh, using maybe 12 and just keep hitting enter, enter one more time. You're going to see those points. Okay, so instead of uh, bending the object, we are actually, it's going to rotate in those points instead. So let's go ahead to using the rotate tool. And on those uh, points that we select, we want to go something like this. All right. And notice that it is not changing much on the top, not changing much on the bottom, but this area that we rotated is stretched a lot. 
So we want to kind of uh, have this coming back and something like this. And then uh, the good thing about this is uh, for the cage edit, you can kind of like giving them more uh, detail edit instead of just trying to like bend the whole thing. So I can feel like I may need to have this coming down a little bit like this two might want to be smashed down just a little bit and then you can keep editing and find the shape that you like a lot of time we also have something more like a cross uh, setting so mean that it's look like it's really pointed um, at the tip of the prong so what we can also do is pick up all those points and I want to come over my command here and we're gonna use this one's called taper all right, so I'm going to uh, click on somewhere in the middle right here, holding my shift, click on this end, and then click right here and bring it in like this. All right, so that allow you to make the prong uh, more pointed, All right? And you can keep editing until you find a shape that you like. I'm going to stop here. If you hit the escape key, then you will see you can you can get rid of the point and if you like this no longer wanted to use it you can delete the bounding box um, if you need to bring back the control point you just hit turn on the control point you will keep editing until you are satisfied okay i feel like it might be a little bit too pointed there so i might want to bring it down just a little bit okay so now i want to delete this one and let's go ahead to click this one and we wanted to do the polar array snapping into the zero and i wanted to have four of them then we will have something like this after that you can use a boolean different to get rid of anything that is uh coming out from the bottom the very last one is a sub d learning jury cat it is not just a cat model we have a model for rendering. We also have a model for production. If you want your jewelry come to life, you need to understand the production. And I'm here to help you. In the following week, I'm going to open my schedule to meet you privately online. Together, we're going to brainstorming a great study plan for you to understand jewelry care design for production. If you are interested in to meet me privately, sign up link is in the description below. Hope to see you in the meeting. Thank you for watching and I will see you next.